your spirit open this morning? Are you sensitive to the still, small voice of the Holy Spirit who's blowing in this place right now? When we gather together, we gather together to worship. We come together to see what God will do in our midst. We come together and we lift our hearts and we lift our voices. We say, God, not my will, but yours be done. God, I want to have an experience with your goodness. I want to have an experience with your love. And so I come and I yield myself and I come to participate and to, to be stirred up on the inside and to be a part of what God is doing in our time together. You know, God is doing something. He's doing something very unique this morning. He's doing something a little bit different. So I just want to encourage you to have your antennas up and not be in the mode of, well, okay, when are we going to get on with the announcements and when are we going to follow the routine? Because, you know, if we do that, we may miss out on the very thing that God wants to do. While we were in prayer prior to the service this morning, the Lord began to speak about many things. But one of the things that he said is that I want to adjust the course of our church about one degree. About one degree. Can I say that God wants to adjust the course of your life today? One degree. And you might say, you know, that's probably not very much. That's not significant. It's only one degree. But can I tell you that the one degree that you change your course today, if you can project yourself 10, 15, 20, 25 years into the future, that one degree can make all of the difference between you fulfilling the God-given destiny, the dreams, and the vision that God's placed in your heart and missing it by 500 miles. It doesn't take much. You know, in the kingdom, everything is about being sensitive to and obedient to the move of the Holy Spirit in our life. I'll tell you, it's really easy to get in a rut. It's easy to get in a groove, but just about the time you get in that place, you've got the carpet out, you've got the furniture all where you want it, you say, yeah, I've worked hard to get in this place. This is comfortable. About that time, the Holy Spirit comes in, grabs a hold of that carpet, and yanks it real hard. And guess what happens to all of the furniture? Guess what happens to everything that you so skillfully put in order all of a sudden it's all out of whack and you say God what's wrong here where did I miss it and sometimes I believe the Lord wants us to know that there are corrections that he's bringing in our lives that you know if he didn't come and overturn the apple cart so to speak that we would continue and we would say we're blessed look at what God has done Sometimes God actually creates chaos. Sometimes He creates what seems to be, to us, confusion. Because in the midst of it all, God is moving by His Spirit. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it says that in the beginning, the earth was void. And darkness was over the face of the deep. And then it says the Spirit of God began to hover and he began to speak. You see, when God created, it looked like chaos. It looked like confusion. But how many of you know that to God it wasn't chaos? To God it wasn't confusion. All it took was one word from God. One word from God to bring absolute, total, and complete order out of chaos. Can I tell you that all it takes in your life is one word from God. All it takes is a one degree correction in how we approach the heart of worship and we approach church and we approach our community can 
make the difference between doing church as normal and seeing absolute transformation in our community. How many of you believe that? Amen. So I am just open this morning. I'm just really, really open to what the Lord is saying and what the Lord is doing. The Lord led me to this particular passage in the book of Acts, chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. You know, I was really excited because I know the next verse. The next verse says, and suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them. But the, you know what? The Lord said, don't go there. Stop at verse 1. Verse 1. simply says when the day had come they were all together in one place for them it happened to be the day of Pentecost for us it's February the 28th 2016 it's the day today is the day okay do you believe that today is the day today is the day in your life. Most of us think the day is tomorrow, which is leap day, by the way. But most of us always think the day is someplace in the future. What if the day in your life were today? What if today was the day that was going to make all of the difference for the rest of your life? If what God wanted to do here today, what He wants to do right now in worship, because you see, the Bible says... And we were singing this this morning, that we're changed in His presence. You see, when we have these kind of interludes and in worship, and Deborah was sharing and prophesying this morning, when the instruments begin to play and the instruments begin to prophesy, what does your heart do? Does your heart begin to prophesy? Does your heart begin to open up to hear what thus saith the Lord to you and your spirit? I believe that the Lord is speaking to each and every one of us here this morning. We have come together on this day, in this place, and we're all together. When we're all together, guess what the Holy Spirit can do? Whatever He wants. <laughs> he can do whatever He wants. I don't know how many of you recognize, but towards the end of worship, the instruments began to prophesy. Could you sense it? Could you feel it? Not a word was being spoken, but the instruments came alive and began to prophesy. They began to prophesy life to you and life to me in this body. the suddenly for this morning. I don't know. But we'll find out why. Amen. Anything? A hunger for you It has consumed us A thirst for you it's like a drought in us So won't you rain down Oh, won't you draw near We need you here We need you here Our hunger for you It has consumed us Our thirst for you It's like a drought in us So won't you rain down you draw near we need you here we need you here our hunger for you God it has consumed us our thirst for you it's 
just like a drought in the sea. So won't you rain down? Oh, won't you draw near? We need you here. We need you here. Come on, let's lift our voices. Let's raise our, our voices. Let's lift our spirits. Let's cry out to the living God. Rain down on us, oh God. Rain down in this place this morning. Oh, we welcome the Holy Spirit. We lift our hearts. We lift our voices. We welcome the Holy Spirit. Team. The only thing that we're going to be able to say is we serve a mighty God. And we came together in one place on this day. And we worshiped God. It wasn't about how good the music was. It wasn't about how much revelation there was in the teaching. It was a time where we humbled ourselves and we just came together. to lay down our, our dreams, to lay down our lives, to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice before the living God, to say, Holy Spirit, God, as we gather together in one place on this day, God, stamp your print in our lives. We don't ever want to be the same. God, I believe that because of what you're doing in this place today, Lord, that our tomorrows will be richer. The presence of the Lord in this place will be full. That there will be a prophetic voice that rises up in this house that permeates our worship. That 
permeates the congregation, that permeates the preaching, that the very Spirit of God and the anointing of Jesus, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher, the Holy Spirit in all of His gifts, in words of wisdom, in words of knowledge, in special faith, in miracles, and healing, and discerning of spirits, in tongues, and interpretation, in all of the gifts of the Spirit. God will show Himself in His power, in His splendor, and His might. Because we raise up a standard in this house, a standard of the love of God, our love for Him, based on a revelation of His love for us, who will absolutely revolutionize our lives, our church, and our community. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. us as a church we had a um, we had a movie night on Friday night and it was absolutely amazing the Spirit of God came in this place we just put a little sign out on out up the road and put a little message on Facebook 
Pastor Andrea came in and put down a couple extra three rows of seats. I'm saying, God, I don't think we'll need them, but okay. And we had a lot of problems <laughs> with projectors and screens and you know, we were just really attacked on a lot of different levels. And then about Friday, about 7.10, I was ready for it to be over. <laughs> the warfare that had led up to it, I didn't even know it was warfare, I just thought it was a bad day. But all of a sudden, the doors began to open. People began to come in. I don't even know where they came from. But the place started to fill up. At first there were five or ten or fifteen. I thought, wait, hey, that's good. I don't care if anybody comes. I love this movie. I'm going to enjoy it. And one by one, people kept coming in. Until right before we started the movie, I didn't count, but there were close to a hundred people here. We had to put extra seats out. Not only did we fill up everything that was here, but we had to put everything that we had. We had people standing in the back. And the Spirit of God came and touched hearts and lives. And one young man gave his heart to the Lord and an eight-year-old girl was baptized. The Lord began to speak about his desire. Do we really believe God? can change our community? Do we really believe that the movie that we saw, was it just a movie about a great football player? Or was it a movie about a great God? Was it in God's time to invite a football team to be a part of creating a story that would give glory to Almighty God for generations to come? And for God to use that story to ignite a fire in our community. Because God wants to do something. It's not a matter of us figuring it out and saying, God bless what we're doing. It's a matter of saying, God, what are you doing? And us adjusting our lives and adjusting our sails to what the Spirit of God is doing. Because God does more in these simple little moments when we don't think nothing is going on. When I have two people two weeks ago say, hey, pastor, have you seen this movie? It's been out since October. I never heard of it. And I go home and I watch that. And then just in a couple of phone calls, something that we think that we're going to do just for two or three turns into something that God uses to reach our community, to bring people to the Lord to be baptized. Isn't it amazing what God is doing? And God's given us a picture of what he desires to do, but I just hear the Lord continuing to remind us that it's, it's not by might or by power, but it's by my spirit. You see, we've got to learn how to continue to reverence the presence of the Lord. We've got to learn how to cultivate that in our lives. So when we come here on Sunday morning, yeah, we've got a backup plan, so to speak. We know the basic DNA of our gifting and what we do. And you know what? On an average Sunday, we're going to probably flow up on into that. But I think there's something specific on this day that we've gathered together in this place. And you might say, well, you know, hey, there's only a few of us here this morning. Do you think God's disappointed? <laughs> Do you think that he drove down the road and said, well, listen, there's not very many folks there. I think I'll just go down to First Baptist this morning. <laughs> so that's not our God. God says, listen, there's the Gideon's 300. Here's the 12 that are in the upper room, you know. Here are those who are gathered, that insignificant group, that God says, I'm going to use you to be a catalyst for the rest of the body. I'm going to use you. I'm going to deposit something in you today, and you don't even know what it is. 
But the thing is, is that as we worship Him, it's not about, God, I receive it now. Lord, give me a prophetic word. It's about worshiping Him, and while your heart is flowing and the door to heaven is open both ways, you know what I'm saying? That God begins to deposit. We, we open our mouth and we declare our love for Him in worship. And while we're doing that, God opens His mouth and begins to declare and to sing over us who we are. He sings His song over us. And guess what? When God sings His song, God creates order out of chaos. When God sings His song over your life, He looks down over what looks like to be confusion, what looks like turmoil, what looks like tribulation. And God sings His song over your life. And He sings His song over your family. And He sings His song over your marriage. He sings His song over your place of employment. He sings His song over that area in your life that you're most concerned about. God sings that song over you because we sing our song to Him. That's not even a fair exchange, do you think? I think it's pretty awesome. And so, you know, God's good because I forgot what I was talking about. But God said that He wanted to baptize this congregation this morning. I don't think we'll all fit in the little pool over here. I left it open because we had individuals who didn't come prepared for the baptism on Friday. And so I wanted to leave it open for anybody who wanted to be baptized this morning, who wanted to rededicate their lives and say, God, I'm done with the old. I'm ready for the new. It doesn't mean that you're not born again. It just says, hey, listen, I'm going to take this day and I'm going to make a line in the sand and I'm done with the old. I'm ready for the new. And today, February the 28th, 2016, is the day that I'm saying, God, I'm going into the water. And I'm saying, it's a new beginning. And you know what? I'm we're open to doing that for you as an individual, if you'd like. But I would like to do something symbolic as a congregation. Can I get everybody to stand? When I jump in the pool, I generally don't jump in or in a seated position because I'm in over my head right from the start. And so I want to prophesy this morning that the wave of the river of God is in this place. And we came in, it was kind of ankle deep, all right? As we began to worship, the water began to rise and it came up and it was knee deep. And just about the time when we thought we were done, God said, will you, will you pour out your heart to me a little more? And we, we did, and the instruments began to prophesy, and the water level came up. And I'm telling you right now, the water's about right here. There's a river in this place. God has said that he is not only going to build a well in this place for the community, but a river. A river is going to flow from this place out into the community. And we had an apostle from Africa here in 2011, September the 11th, 2011. We rededicated the land and the property and the apostle began to declare a river that God was going to bring from this place and it would flow into the four corners of the world. It's a river in the spirit. So you see, we've got natural water, but there's spiritual water. And so I want to invite you to represent River of Love Community Church this morning. And I want to read a scripture out of Romans. And what we're going to do, since we can't all hop into baptismal, is we're going to go from here and we're going to get on our knees. And as we do, that's going to symbolize our baptism. Okay. We're going to be in over our heads. Cool. <laughs> Always want to get in over my head. That way it's 
it's not about me, it's all about him, amen. There is a gospel of grace. There is a message about the goodness of God and the love of God that leads men to repentance. There was a day in the 1800s when the message of hell, fire, and brimstone and the wrath of God brought about revival in the land. But we're living in a day where there's a new message. Same God, but there's a new message that's being proclaimed in the world today. You see it on the television, you hear it on the radio, you see it all over the internet. It's a message about the nature of God. It's about the grace of God. God's overwhelming pleasure to lavish wave upon wave upon wave of His goodness and His mercy and His love upon mankind. Because you see, the Bible says that the Lord is not slow to anger, but He's patient, not willing that any should perish. And you see, I believe that there is a wave and it's going to be rolling out of this place and it's going to be rolling out of churches across this country of a gospel of grace and a message about the true love of God. I want to be baptized in that. I don't ever want to let go of that. And so in Romans, it, it says... Uh, what shall we say? What shall we say? Are we to continue in sin so that grace may increase? There's a gospel of grace. But it's not a message that says that you can continue in sin. It's a message that says, listen, man, woman, child, when you get a revelation of the goodness of God, when you catch a wave of His Spirit, it's going gonna, it's gonna to grab a hold of you and it's going to catch you up on in to the very holy of holies. It's going to catch us right up into the holy of holies. Washed white and clean and pure. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ have been baptized into his death. Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. I'm telling you, if you've been born again, if you've been walking with God for a season in your life, and you've experienced newness, I'm going to declare to you today, you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. God is getting ready to pour out His glory. And in the same way that Christ was raised from the dead, after what seems like three days and three nights of the most agonizing time that you've ever experienced in your life, suddenly, on a particular day, the angel came down and rolled away the stone. And the Holy Spirit blew into that grave. It's life. Life was declared from the Father in heaven. And what looked like was dead came back to life. And it wasn't just, hey, I'm alive a little bit. It was a glorious life. It was a life that was so far exceeding anything that one could ask or think that it changed the very course of all of history. And all of history marks itself from the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you that Jesus is coming again? And the Bible says that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be when he comes again. People will be marrying and be given in marriage. They'll be running about and doing their thing and lavishing upon themselves the, the pleasures 
of this life. And suddenly, just like when the waters flowed and lifted up Noah in the ark, there's a wave that's coming. There's a wave that's coming. And it's going to catch us all up into glory. And we're going to be with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. But before that huge wave comes, there's some waves that the Lord wants to bring forth in the earth. Let's go ahead and get baptized. <laughs> Resurrection life. Let's take a knee. Father, symbolically right now, Lord, we, we walk by faith and not by sight. We acknowledge you and your spirit in this place. Father, right now, we're baptized in you. Father, we represent not only our own individual lives, but we represent the river. We represent River of Love Community Church. And Lord, prophetically, we represent our community and our world. Father, we declare, Lord God, that we are crucified with you. Nevertheless, we live. Yet not I, but Christ in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Father, here in this place, Lord, as we are immersed in your spirit, God, I ask you to, Lord, as we stand, I ask you to bring forth a new thing. I ask you to pour out your spirit, Father. I ask for resurrection life to be manifest into every one of our lives. Not just our lives, but our entire congregation, those who are here and those that you're calling. Lord, we ask for our community. Lord, this Tuesday is an election day, and right now, Lord, we want to declare that you're the winner. You're the winner. We elect you. You are the president of our lives. It doesn't matter. I mean, it does, but the most important decision is who sits upon the throne of our heart. Lord, we declare that you do. So, Father, Lord, as we stand, We've walked through the valley of the shadow of death. Lord, we declare that we're alive right now. Lord, we declare that there's life in this place, Father. We declare that your seed has been planted in us, Lord, that your spirit is blowing upon us. God, there's a work in the spirit that you've done. You've rolled away the stone. You've rolled away the stone. and Lord, your declaration to us has come out. Come out of the grave. Take off the grave clothes. Walk out. Begin to take this new life for a ride. Because you're not alone. Christ said, I would never leave you. I would never forsake you. I will lead you and I will guide you in the way that you should go. And there will be times of pruning. There will be times of cutting back. But it's all because you are my fruitful vine. And I desire to bring much fruit, and I have planted you in the rich soil of this community and this church. And you will look in the days to come, and you will see the fruit of that which I have done in this place today. You will see it, and you will wonder at my goodness. You will wonder at my grace. You will wonder at my love. For I will continue to lavish you with an abundance of goodness, mercy, and love. Wave upon wave will continue to pound upon your life as I sculpt and I form and I shape the vessels of honor that I have called you to be. For my gifts and my callings are without repentance. I am the Lord, and I am the one who has called you to this place, and I do not repent. 
I will take you out of the ashes. I will take you out of the grave. And I will take these very things that the enemy sought to destroy you with. And I will cause them to be the very stepping stones into a greater glory than you could ever think or imagine. Only trust in me. Trust in me with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge me. I will direct you back. And that good work which I have begun in you today, I will bring forth to maturity. I will bring forth to completion. Because it's not by power. It's not by might. It's not by your strength, but it is by my spirit. And so it is for that reason that I breathe my spirit upon you. As you all gather together on this day in one accord. This is my bidding. This is my plan. This is my purpose. So go in peace and be filled with love and proclaim my grace to all who have ears to hear. For lo, I am with you always even until the end. One thing that is so unique about the way that God moves is he has a work and when he's done, I don't know if you can sense it in your spirit, but I just, I just sense you know, God said it's, it's finished. He's completed the work. Hallelujah. Can we give him a hand this morning? Amen. You know, you can't orchestrate services like this. All of what has taken place today has come about as a result of prayer, the orchestrating of what God has been doing through the week, what God has brought forth in prayer and prophetically through worship, and the people that he's gathered together this morning. Amen. Aren't you glad to be a part? Amen. It won't be like this next Sunday. It'll be different. Okay. How many of you feel like we had a one degree change this morning? Amen. I think I got maybe 10 degree. Okay. The Lord had me stretching out in some areas that I haven't uh, stretched out in in a while. But you know what? I'm so thankful. I want to I wanna flow with the Spirit of God, you know. And I'm so thankful for what God is doing in this church. I am not interested in doing church program. We serve a living God who walks in relationship with us. And man, I'll tell you what, I want to walk lockstep with him all the way. Amen.